Hi and welcome back to the last section of this video course. This section groups some miscellaneous topics and in particular we'll discuss time series and recommended systems. This video specifically is about time series analysis using pandas. Before digging into the details of time series, let's have a quick overview on the section. So with this section, we're grouping some more advanced topics, specifically time series analysis using pandas and also the library stats models. And for the second part of the section, we'll talk about recommendation systems, providing an introduction and an implementation of a system that can recommend movies to users. And now we're ready to start uh, with this video on time series analysis using pandas. In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of time series and uh, we will look at concepts of time series analysis, in particular trend and seasonality. For the implementation, we're going to use pandas that we have already seen before, and also the library stats models that we haven't introduced in the video course yet, but it's one of the important libraries to work with the statistics in Python. If you have followed the installation and setup video, you should already have the library in your virtual environment. Otherwise, you can use conda install stats models from the command line and you're good to go. So as an introduction, time series are sequences of data points listed in time order. It's quite common to have uh, data points collected at quick equally spaced intervals over time, although this is not a strict requirement. Examples of time series include measuring the temperature in a particular environment throughout the day, or measuring the levels of pollution in some areas during the year, or measuring the number of taxi rides for a taxi company over a period of time. Some of the aspects we are interested in are, for example, the trend of a series, so how a series increases or decreases over time, so as a long-term progression. And another aspect is seasonality, so whether we can observe seasonal patterns due to seasonal factors. So, for example, if you run a pizza delivery company, you might see a regular increase in delivery requests on weekend nights, so you hire more delivery riders. So now we are ready to look at some code. For this exercise, we are using a toy dataset of flight passengers. This is a dataset from the 70s. You can see a link to the dataset here and some reference. The dataset is in a CSV format and it's included in the repository for this video course where you find all the code as well. So first we load up the air passengers file into a pandas data frame and this is how the data look like. So we have two columns, first one with the month and the second one with the number of passengers in thousands. We see that we don't have any empty value. So for both fields there is no null value which is always good although often not the case in a real data set. We can check out the data types or D types for our columns. And we see in particular that the month is recognized as a generic object rather than a daytime object. This means that the values we see in the column are strings. But for us, it's more convenient to have daytime objects so we can perform time related operations. So, one thing we can do, we can override the month column using the helper function to daytime which is able to read a string and without specifying the format, we'll try to infer the correct value for the date time. So now this column has been casted as a date time object. And by default, the dates use the first of the month to fill in the value for the day that was missing in the original string. We can also check the correct D type and confirm that the month is a date time object. Daytime objects allow us to do arithmetic between dates so we can calculate intervals or group data by specific time intervals and so on. So it's simply just more handy to cast the values to daytime objects. And the daytime objects are fairly complex and also come with a special namespace that you can access as attribute dt of the object itself. This gives you access to specific components of the date like uh, the year, the month, and so on. So here we can access directly the year, for example. It seems uh, straightforward, but if you try to do it uh, with a string-based value, it can be quite brittle and difficult to perform due to the many ways date strings can be represented. 
so daytime object is uh, just more convenient for us. Another thing we would like to do with this uh, pandas data frame is to use the daytime object as uh, index of the data frame itself. This is because we can uh, use the daytime index to exploit uh, its more powerful features. For example, we can analyze sequences or compute relative values and so on. So just using the set index function this is quite straightforward. And now we can see how the data frame looks like with the month being the index and the air passenger column being the only column. And now that the daytime object is an index, we can just plot the date. So using matplotlib inline, this is as simple as calling the function plot on the data frame. And we also include the grid just to make it a bit prettier. So we can notice here that the column month has been used as our x value. And because we did the casting as daytime, the values are automatically formatted, in this case, just using the year in four digits by default. Now looking at the data, we notice a couple of things. First, the general trend. We can see that over time, the airline has more passengers, so there are ups and downs, but the trend is in general increasing. Secondly, looking at uh, these ups and downs, they seem to be pretty regular. So we might be observing some seasonal pattern here. So let's try to take a closer look. Using the daytime objects from the standard library, we can indicate a time interval. In this case, starting from January 1959 until December 1960. This is arbitrary. We simply want to observe a couple of consecutive years, just uh, giving a closer look. And we're using the Boolean indexing over the data frame to retrieve elements where the index, which is our date, is greater than the starting date and lower than the end date. And then we plot it again with the grid as well. So what we observe here is in fact some seasonal trend. Probably people go on holiday over summer, so that's where you have the main spikes, and they travel less during winter, although there is also a smaller spike around December or holiday season if you prefer. That's just one possible interpretation. Now that uh, we had a uh, first look uh, at the data, let's uh, talk about the decomposition of a time series. So there are a couple of uh, simple models that we can look at. One is called the additive model, where the components of a time series are simply added together. Another option is called the multiplicative model, where the same components are multiplied together. And the components are listed here. So y is the time series over time t, and following the additive model in this case, we have the sum of the trend over time plus seasonality over time plus the residuals over time, the residual being the difference between expectation and observation. Using the stats models library, here we are importing its API using the alias SM, which is kind of a common pattern. We have a time series analysis package, TSA which has a seasonal decompose function, and that's pretty straightforward to use. The result is an object representing the decomposed time series that we can plot directly. Now, because of the HTML representation of the object, since we are using it from Jupyter Notebook, we just store the result of the plot method into a variable called fig, otherwise we would see a duplicated figure. If you're using the same code outside Jupyter, there is no need for it as described in the commented line. Anyway, the result now is pretty clear. We have uh, the trend going up and we have the seasonality which follows this kind of regular pattern. Another thing we can do is to plot the trend together with the observed time series. First a quick hack. So we can double the size of the main matplotlib figure that otherwise would be too small in Jupyter. So instead of a 6 by 4 inches, we have here a 12 by 8 inches figure. Now with the plot, the code looks a bit verbose maybe. This is because we are touching quite a few options with matplotlib. A good portion of this code is to show the grid and the labels for the x-axis correctly. In particular, we want the ear to be visible and labeled. That's our major locator for the grid. We center each year on the month of January using the year locator object. And then as a minor locator, we use also the month locator. 
with a tick every three months, so essentially every quarter. So that's what's going on with a good portion of this code. The grid is shown for the minor locator, meaning we show all the ticks every three months. And then for plotting the data, we just need the two bottom lines. So we plot the whole data set in blue using the index of the data frame itself, and then as a date for the x-axis and the number of passengers for the y-axis. And then we do the same with the trend in red. So the decomposition object has the attribute trend, which is also a pandas data frame. And long story short, that's how the plot looks like. And again, we can see the trend that goes up against the individual observations. In this video, we have introduced time series analysis, and in particular, we have looked at aspects like trend and seasonality. We have mainly used Pandas, which is a great tool for time series, and it integrates the notion of a daytime index. And we have also briefly introduced the library Stats Models, which is in general great for statistical models in Python, and in particular, we use it for the seasonal decomposition.